Hi, my name is Roger and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to compare Pultec style EQ plugin. Which one is best? Which one is worth the money? Before we start, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, also give it a like. That helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Pultec EQ1, started in 1951 by Pulse Technologies. It's a passive all-tube EQ and it's famous for its shiny top end and thick bottom. And it's a high shelf and low shelf, you might say, and it's still in use today. And a lot of manufacturers have made clones of it, like Warm Audio, Tube Tech and so on. And there are, of course, plug-in emulations of this EQ. And I will compare a few of them today. First, I want to show you something interesting. I have Plugin Doctor here, so I can analyze the plugins. I will also show you how the EQ curve of a Pultec is and how it behaves. Let's look at this UAD Pultec Pro. This is the this line is what is analyzed. This is the EQ curve of the Pultec plugin, but it isn't turned on yet. So let me turn it on and see what happens now. Huh. The signal got like one and a half, two dBs louder just by turning it on. I don't like that. UAD, please, please keep it at the same level or make an output knob so we can adjust before and after level, please. Right? You can also see that there are some peaks, small peaks of the EQ already. Probably it's modeled that way. Probably it is that way on the hardware. So that's, they have modeled everything on the hardware. That's why it's louder. That's why we have this EQ curve. I will turn that off and I will show you with this soft tube, tube tech emulation is a pull textile this also this is how it looks flat it isn't flat but this is how it looks flat this is when you just turn the plug-in on let's boost the low frequency let's give it a hundred and boost it that's not a hundred is it no it starts boosting at one and a half k all the way to the bottom so what it says on the plugin isn't the real 100 hertz, is it? If I lower the frequency, the boost is going to start lower also. So that's 60, that's 30, and that's 20. Now, when I have the boost set at 20 hertz, the boost starts at around 200 hertz. The attenuation in the low lowers well, lowers the bottom. And a famous Pultec trick is to use both at the same time. So if I choose 30 hertz, I boost it a bit and then attenuate it at the same time. Then we got this crazy curve with a dip in the low mid and then a boost at the bottom. Often used on bass and drums or on the whole mix, maybe. Let's see how the high behaves. I'm going to boost now 10K, 10 kilohertz. And it looks like this with a bandwidth at zero. We get a rather narrow peak at around 10K. But if I raise the bandwidth, the boost is going to get lower, but wider. Uh-huh. And it's the same if I change the frequency. It just follows the frequency like that. And the attenuation on the high is just a dip. If I choose 5 kilohertz and boost 12, it's going to look like this. So you can raise the treble without getting the harshness if you want to. Now let's get rid of this. I have made a mix here of the Roger That song of 2021 and I didn't raise the top end or the bottom end deliberately on my master bus. So it sounds like this now. Now 
Now let's see what the pull technique you can do to this mix. I did this to all the plugins we're going to compare. I raised the high end to 7 at 10 kilohertz with full bandwidth. I boosted the low end to 5 at 60 hertz and attenuated it to and a half. This is not dBs, this is just numbers. I also tried to adjust the volume so that every plugin has the same output volume so we can compare them. This is the UAD Pultec EQP1A Legacy and it sounds like this. For me it sounds good, it doesn't get harsh and the bottom end feels thick but tight at the same time. I like it. This is a favorite plugin of mine. Let's go to the waves. I don't own all these plugins. Some of these I own, some are free and some I, I have a demo of. And the waves plugin sounds like this. very similar to the UAD, maybe a bit woolier in the bottom and a bit thinner in the top, maybe a little tiny bit. It could be the same difference between two hardware units. So I don't think the difference matter at all on these plugins. Logic have its own tube EQ. Let's see how that sounds. A little bit harsher uh, in the treble. The low end is good. There's another thing that is annoying with this Logic plugin, and that is the latency it causes. And it's weird because it's a native plugin within Logic. It shouldn't do that. Let's listen to this. I have the UAD plugin uh, that sounds like this. And then the Waves plugin, which I flipped the phase on. The only thing Together they sound like this. The only thing I know. Nearly out of phase. It's just the difference between the plugin emulations that you can hear. But if I do that with the Waves and the Logic, it sounds like this. The only thing I know. It's so much latency in the Logic plugin that it causes crazy phase issues it should be much more nulled than this you could do better apple you could the next eq plugin is a free one it's the ignite amps pteqx and it sounds like this the only brighter I might say a little bit brighter could be both good and bad but very good plugin for the price the price is zero so that's a really good price then I have Kuasa it sounds like this the only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. very slick uh, very gentle you might say uh, sounds decent. Uh, Soft tube have this tube tech emulation that is rather expensive, but I think it sounds really good. Also, it sounds like this. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. Everywhere I go, I will start to run. This is bright without being harsh and in the bottom end I feel I can hear the tubes a bit sort of woolly but still tight sound now we're gonna come to an, an interesting plugin this is from Apogee uh, from Apogee 
FX Rack Pultec and it sounds like this. Is it something wrong with this? Am I doing something wrong? Let's turn it, let, let's, let's reset this totally. Bandwidth zero, boost zero. Um, yeah, and just turn it off. The only thing I know and on. Is that I don't know at all. It, it sounds like it, there's a pillow on the sound. I will, I will try to raise the top end as much as I can and see if I can get this pillow out of my face and my song. It just sounds horrible. Is this for real? Officially licensed? Really? I don't like that. Do you like that? And finally, we have PSP, Noble EQ. Not really a Pultec style, but nearly. So I chose this one also. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all everywhere I go. Maybe not so much character. Let's see if there's going to be a difference if I go from valve to clear or this trim knob the only thing I know oh is that I don't know enough at all. oh it, it's distorting a little bit, bit when I raise this the only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. a very subtle difference which one was your favorite? Well, let's listen to them again. I'm gonna have two bars with each plugin so we can compare them. The only thing I know is that I don't know enough at all. Everywhere I go. I was start to run before I crawled. The only thing I know is that. So what do you think? Where do you use a Pultec EQ? Well, everywhere where you want a smiley face EQ. I often use it on the master bus. I often mix into a Pultec EQ with a bit of top end boost and low end boost. So I don't have to raise it on every single track in my mix. I also often use it to get some shine on background vocals or percussion where I want the shine without it getting harsh because the Pultec treble doesn't really get harsh. Well, what do you say? Is there any of these plugins that get harsh? Or are they shiny, smooth as a Pultec should be? Please leave it in the comment what you think. Share the video, like it, subscribe, all those things. There's a lot of tubes in a hardware Pultec. And tube in Swedish is rar. Rar. Until next time, Roger that.